standing up for McKinney. This is According to Callus. Welcome, welcome. This is part two of these special uh, weekend episodes here. Yes, it is episode 473, State of Affairs number two, part two. Here we go. All right, so brief recap. I went through the who am I, what do I want, and why. Why does it matter? That was the way I ended the previous episode. I tried to give you adequate background so it was clear where I was coming from in case you just didn't know. So as a big fan of the Liberty Caucus, as a big fan of individual liberty, even though I myself no longer identify as a libertarian, I will tell you that I would clearly see myself in the 90 plus percentile in liberty advocacy within the Republican Party. That being said, as a former Ron Paul guy, and I, well, actually, I shouldn't say that I came on board because of Ron Paul in the Republican Party. Never hid that, never lied about it, always try to be consistent Now, there are some things that uh, are challenging with the Libertarians, which is why I'm first and foremost not a member of their party or group. But that being said, everything that I do, everything I support with is I towards liberty. The problem is is there's a whole lot of people within our party, which are big government conservatives, right? And I have just as much trouble with them as big government conservatives as I do milquetoast moderates. And by trouble, I just mean they're serious things that we disagree upon that pose challenges in finding common ground. But at the end of the day, we're supposed to be on the same team. We're supposed to operate on common ground. So I try my best to move the Overton window because right now they're in the majority. They're in the driver's seat. And I know this. I'm okay with this. That was a calculated understanding of my involvement. So what does that mean? How does that bring this to where we're at? Okay, well, I kind of gave you as much background information as I could uh, to how did I become part of the party and why have I been involved with the party and what have I been doing? Because this, a lot of this is personal to me. Personal in the sense that these are my principles. These are the things that keep me involved and have caused me to work as hard and as long and as much as I do to help the cause. So I got to say, it's a little disappointing when people question you, when you've been taking one for the team for a long time. And really and truly any Ron Paul Republican basically does (laughs) nothing but take one for the team. I mean, very rarely do we get a straight up win of our own. Oh, we make a good point here and there. We we might get a back slap for helping somebody get something done. But by and large, we're, we're on the losing end. And I made peace with that a long time ago. But that also means that I have to set aside my personal preference, right? Because the principles are this, this, and this. And, you know, in the Republican Party, we got over 300 platform planks, which could be considered individual principles. And that's what we work on. That, that's that, that's what we agree on. And then we, and then we come out and say, well, these are our legislative priorities. These are the eight to 10 things that we absolutely want done out of our state legislature. Well, we might get half. Hey, but a win is a win. It's disappointing. It's disgruntling, but a win is a win. And I've learned to deal with this. I want to be effective by continuing to work. People aren't going to listen to me if I sit around and call them names and dismerge them and be mean to them. And quite frankly, just be a jerk. I avoid that. Like the plague. I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. We all fail. Most of our elected officials actually do have clay feet. You know, and the more I hear from them and the the more I see, it's disappointing. Now, I, I know two or three guys that are elected officials that I would gladly take it on the chin for. I know all three of these guys personally. I trust them immensely. They haven't let me down. We've agreed to disagree on things here and there. That's okay. But they're good men and I trust them. Then there's plenty of other, you know, and I want to say this from the onset. I know probably some of my listeners and probably some of my friends really don't care. And I don't mention this to pat myself on the back. I don't, I don't mention this to try and raise my own status. That's not it at all. Because I know somebody doesn't mean anything, you know, and and I'm, find myself blessed to know the number of 
elected officials that are solid people that I do. I know some elected officials that are not so solid. One of them really let me down this last year. Extremely disappointed. But you know what? That's on him. That was his choice. But we still go on. We still move forward. We we look to the next thing. So for those of you who have been following, you may recall we had a municipal election here in Collin County. And I did my best to help out where I could and make a difference. It's If it's not clear to you, we got our butts kicked. But the saddest part about it is it's our own fault. We didn't utilize any strategy, in my opinion. And again, let me, let me rephrase this just in case somebody might have forgotten. Specifically, both of these episodes and every episode that I make on this show is my opinion or my understanding of the situation. I don't expect you to believe me flat out. I want you to go do your own research. I want you to question the things that I say. I have no fear of that because I'm not hiding anything. And I'll give you an example here in a minute. But I am very comfortable with where I'm at and what I'm doing. I don't claim to be perfect. I won't lob insults that are unfounded on anybody. But this is the recitation, right? My understanding of the facts some of which I was directly involved with, some of which I've got firsthand testimony regarding, and some of it is just plain observation and putting the pieces together. A little bit of detective work, if you may. That being said, I'm going to be very careful to not indict any one individual or any group of people and make it all about them, because I think that would be a mistake. Much like if you were to come after me personally, for a political stance or a position that I might hold, you're doing nobody any favors. And for those of you out there that result, or I'm sorry, <laughs> resolve that that's the best way to win the battle, or you got nothing else, I'm, I feel sad for you. I really do. But that being said, here we are. Okay, so going forward, right? So I'm going to bring you up to the current events, but before I do, let me give you a little bit of added insight. So once upon a time, we're going to say it was five years ago. I might not be exactly right, but five years ago, it was uh, let out that I held a position that caused a conflict within a team that I was on. And rather than be willing to say, well, we agree to disagree, it was a deal breaker. Now, Those of you that know me in real life know what this issue is, and I'm sure I've mentioned it perhaps in a previous podcast. I never thought it was that big of a deal. I never took issue with it. I I certainly never advertised it, and I certainly didn't want to fight a battle over it. I just it was something I personally held. It was a conviction of my own. And quite frankly, I understand why some people would be upset, but if they knew me, if they spent time with me, they should have been willing to set it aside. Some people couldn't. That's their right. I never held it against them. And over time, there was a cost, there was a consequence and being stubborn, being liberty minded, I felt that I was in the right and I should be able to hold this position if that's what I wanted to do. But as time went on, I came to the conclusion that I can hold this position all that I want and I can be right in my own mind all that I want, but I was only hurting myself, my witness, if you will. I was hurting my friends, my allies by holding this because they were using it to be smearing them, right? It was used as a weapon against people that I really liked and respected and wanted to help. So with my own volition, I said, you know what? It's just not worth it anymore. It's not worth the fight. It's not worth the battle. I'm going to set this aside. I am hurting my witness. Now, and I use the example that Paul gives, right? You can be right, but it doesn't mean it's profitable. But if you're causing your brother to stumble or fall, perhaps you ought not do that. Well, that's clearly what was happening here. I was causing my brothers and sisters to stumble and fall. They doubted me. They, They doubted my value, my position, whatever you want to call it. So I set it aside. I said, I'm willing to let this go. For the greater purpose, I'm willing to set aside my personal preference for the principle, which is rooted in liberty, that we need to fight for and we need to protect. And that's more valuable, more important to me personally than this position that I hold. 
And at this point, it's really irrelevant because I no longer hold it. But five years ago, it was used. And I'm sure it caught, you know, there was a consequence in 2019 and a lesser extent in uh, 2020. But for what? For what? Well, I'll tell you, the real world intruded. The real world had issues that were directly related to that. And it was damaging. And I did not want to be affiliated with any of that in any way, shape, or form. That's kind of what caused me to realize that, hey, this is detrimental. This is negative. Put it aside. Okay, so why do I bring this up? Because the idea of a primary is you fight it out for the best candidate. You you make the move to get the person that you best feel represents you or the party or whatever to get across that finish line. And they're going to go run against the Democrats and they're, they're going to go to DC or Austin and do us well. Okay. But when you lose, it's your duty to set aside whatever animosity you you had, whatever problems that you have and support the guy on your team or the lady on your team. You understand that? Yeah, my preference didn't occur, but the principle is we support our team. We go forward and support our team. Now, I'm going to be honest, this is something I really struggled with when I was younger, you know, my mid (laughs) thirties. I really struggled with the idea that (sighs) George Bush is the nominee. I don't like George Bush. I don't trust George Bush, but he's our guy. Mitt Romney. Oh gosh, he's terrible, but he's our guy. So I could have spent all my time disparaging our nominee for what purpose? It does no good. Stop. Likewise, in the congressional races and in council races and commissioner's court races and the governor's races. Now I got to be honest, not a fan of Greg Abbott. He's really let us down in many, many ways. And I supported and campaigned for Don Huffines. Did I think I was going to, that he was going to win? I wasn't sure. Did I think it was good odds? Mm, no, not really, but it was well worth it. Don is a much better guy in my opinion, but you know what? When Greg Abbott won the primary, whether I liked it or not, he's our guy. It sucks. I'll be honest. I did not want to vote for Greg Abbott. I do not support Greg Abbott, but he's our guy. We have to beat him in the primary. That's the way the rules are written. That's the way it is. But when he lost, Don Huff finds, he didn't run around and keep saying, Greg Abbott's terrible. Go vote for Beto. No. He said, uh, Governor Abbott won the primary. He's our guy. I don't have to like him, but he's our guy. That's what you're supposed to do. We as uh, Ron Paul supporters, we stuck around. We became part of the party. We did our work. We invested in the party. We didn't seek to destroy the party. But I got to tell you, in the last four or five years, a lot of the people, and let me be preface this, they were not Ron Paul people. But they were other grassroots activists. They were other people that were involved, whether it was the clubs or different things. They were definitely not the um, municipal, mm, what do you want to call it? Chamber of Commerce, moderate Republicans that generally run most big city Republican Party stuff. No, these were grassroots guys. They they were workers. They they rolled up their shirt sleeves and they got the stuff done. They They were the hardcore. Over that time, we've taken the party to the next step. We've moved the party. We've We've built within the party. We've accomplished a lot of things, but as a result, we've also upset, we've alienated, we've disappointed, we've pushed away people that wanted to be on our team. Not all of us, not everybody. I mean, I, I'm sure I've damaged relationships with people that would have been self-identified as moderate Republicans. And, you know, I, I never hated on them. I was never mean to them. And as a matter of fact, I defended some of them. Not because I necessarily supported what they supported, but because they're on our team. We need them to win. We we need to not spend all this time beating up on our own. We need to work on doing better. We need to work on expanding our influence. But it seems that a, a certain segment of the grassroots that have come on, they have taken the attitude that, well, because at one point the establishment, the business class, ran this party, they have led us down a path, which is, you know, caused all these negative things and they're not entirely wrong, but our reaction or our solution is we're going to purify the party the other way. 
we're going to drive off anybody that we don't agree with. We're, we're going to make it challenging and uncomfortable for these people to be involved. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not happy with that. I think it's a really bad idea. Now, I don't necessarily want Mitt Romney people running the Collin County Republican Party. Absolutely not. But on the flip side, even if the good guys are running the party, we can't chase off the Mitt Romney types. We need the Mitt Romney types. We need people that are willing to invest in the party in other ways. We need to keep them on the same team. And and for me, the biggest fault I see is these grassroots people that I'm on their team more often than not. They don't see the big picture. They're too busy worried about purifying things. They're too busy worried about taking effective control, but it does no good if you've chased off everybody that can help you. It does no good to run a party that can't win a single race, but I don't understand why they they failed to grasp this. And the grassroots friendly leadership of the party completely understands this and they're concerned because these are their people. They were on their team and they're seeking to destroy the effectiveness of the party. Why? Well, this is where it gets dicey. This is where I, this is the hardest part about this whole conversation. Now that I'm again, 45 minutes in, how do I talk about this? How do I not come across like I'm beating up on people that actually philosophically I agree with quite a bit? How do I not make this about disgruntled former candidates? How do I not make this about mm, megalomaniacal? (laughs) Oh, that's not fair. I won't say it. How do I not make this about ambitious people that are in positions of influence? How do I not make this about people that would rather burn it down than let somebody else stay in control? Which is humorous. I had somebody that I know and I quite think highly of who was, by the way, an elected official make a reference that he kind of thought I was one of the burn it down types back in the day, which I kind of chuckled because he's not entirely wrong. Back in 2012, I was a lot more swashbuckly. I was a lot more, uh, get along. No, I don't think so. But I've had 10 years of work and investment and I've seen some of the fruits of our labor. Why in the world would I think that's the better way to go? No, I don't get everything I want. No, I don't. I'm not, you know, a uh, high-powered elected official or anything like that? No, but we've got a lot of what we want. We've accomplished a lot. Why would I want to burn it down? Why would I want to destroy the effectiveness of the team that we have? It's counterproductive. It's foolish. It's short-sighted. So now that brings us up to the results, right? We had this municipal election. We underperformed. The question is, well, why did we underperform? See, for those of you that don't follow wrong or, or, you know, quite frankly, tired of listening to politics all the time. And I got to tell you, as somebody that loves this stuff, even I get mentally exhausted dealing with it from time to time. That's again, part of the reason why this is coming out on a Sunday, mind you. The chairman and I spoke, and again, I'm going to do my best to avoid names. It's not hard to figure out who I'm talking about but I'm purposely not going to throw anybody under the bus. I'm not going to disparage anybody that directly by name. The reason why this stuff is important is you have a conversation and it's concern. And, And it's not just for one person, but the one that mattered is the conversation I had with the guy that makes the appointment. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, I agree. And I've heard this. We need to really review what happens when loser draw. We need to understand why we're not winning more of these races. What can we do better? I volunteered to lead a committee. I spent roughly a month working with people that are on the same team, working a committee and listening to a bunch of other people tell us what they think we did wrong. Give us direct testimony onto the things that could have been done or should have been done to make us more effective, to do a better job, to win races. While this is going on, because I have the fortunate situation where I know a number of people now that maybe aren't even directly in my city, but 
maybe not even in my county, that I can reach out to and I can bounce ideas off and I can ask questions about or, or get feedback on. And I did that. I'm the chairman. I take this responsibility quite heavily. You're asked to do something. You want to make sure you do the best job that you can. So we listen. We come up with ideas. We, we hear everybody out. I lead a meeting. Base the outcome on what did we hear? What do you think? After all this testimony, what are your thoughts on this? What do you see the biggest failings are? What can we improve? Make a list. Tally it. Do you agree with these things? Sure. Okay, now let's talk about some of the things we could do. Some of the things we can do to do a better job going forward. Make another list. Put it out. Now, keep in mind, not everybody is going to agree on everything, whether it's the failures or the possible solutions. It's a committee. We base it off a consensus, an idea. We're not changing rules. We're not, we're not writing legislation. We're not even putting forth a resolution to say we must do this. There are recommendations. And I had the audacity to have an original idea. And honestly, it's not an original idea. It's bringing something back that used to happen all the time in the past. And was it perfect? No. Were there issues? Absolutely. But there is something about it with the functionality that we need to consider. And I will also say that I wasn't even the first person to bring it up, but I heard the idea and I, and I got to say, I, I came to a similar conclusion on my own separately, but the other person beat me to the punch. He knows who he is. He brought it up in a different meeting. Months earlier, I said, that's a great idea. I'm going to steal it. So you go forward and you put forth different ideas and how you can improve and what you might be able to do. And it shouldn't be a battle. It should be, hey, let's hear this out. Let's decide what do we want to do. Meanwhile, certain elements still want to Maintain a certain amount of control. They want to have an outsized influence. Now, as factions go, yeah, there's two or three factions at all times within every group. Sometimes they have a plurality. Sometimes they have a working majority. Sometimes they're just a fringe group. Depending on how well they work and who they work with and what kind of deals they strike, those groups are fluid. No harm, no foul. We're all on the same team here, right? Well, I got to say, based upon the way things have played out, I don't think we're on the same team. I think there's a number of people that are on our team that are first and foremost most concerned about a specific potential future candidate and what needs to be done in order to protect and build up that candidate. Well, I'm sorry, that's not what the party exists for. That's not what our job is. That's not the primary mission. The primary mission, if you talk to anybody in leadership of the Republican Party, is going to tell you to elect Republicans. Now, I will also state for the record, I don't always like the Republicans that we elect. But you know what? Almost every time that Republican is better than the corresponding Democrat. So again, Picking lesser of two evils. Again, not an ideal situation, but at the end of the day, we're on the same team. So again, I'm rehashing some of this and putting it into focus so you understand exactly where I'm coming from. So you go to these meetings and you try and work on getting things done and you you try and accomplish certain things. And look, both sides make mistakes. Both sides can overstep or be wrong, but never ever Do you choose and work to shut down other people's work? Never, ever should you exclude and not allow for people to discuss items. Now, you might postpone it. You might say that it's not the appropriate time. We're going to revisit it. That's all well and good. But when you didn't get your way, you don't then go destroy the next opportunity. When you didn't get to force through something that you wanted or you demanded, you don't then turn around and quite frankly, burn it down the next time. I got to say, extremely disappointed. And to be quite honest, I expected better. I thought better of some of the key people that were involved in this situation. 
neither side's blameless. I'm sure that rightfully some of the blame could be put on me. I could have negotiated better. I could have deferred a little more. But here's the thing. Everything I did, everything I listened to, it was all included. Nothing was edited out. There was no hiding anything. This is a list of recommendations that were to be given to people to review and consider what do you want to do. It didn't happen though, did it? They were so concerned about maintaining control that they shut down everything. Now, whether it was vindictive, whether it was just a power play, I don't know. I don't know what the motivations are. You know, and the guy that's directing issues, I mean, he's smart enough to keep his hands clean. But anybody that's aware of what's going on, we know exactly who he is and what he's up to. It's counterproductive. It's damaging. It's going to cost everybody in the long run. For what? For what? We all want the same thing. We have a shared goal and a shared vision. We might have a different direction of getting, or I'm sorry, we might have different directions or different ways of getting there, but we want the same things. Or do we? Or is the individual that's manipulating some other people actually seeking a different goal, putting a personal preference higher than the principles? And if so, maybe that person's the problem. Maybe that person needs to reassess whether or not they're on the right team. They need to consider, do we actually share the same principles? Or is their personal agenda interfering with what we're trying to accomplish? And again, it's messy because both sides made mistakes. Both sides perhaps overstepped. Both sides, quite frankly, at times probably need to grow up. But when you keep flicking your brother in the ear, sooner or later, your brother's going to hit you back. I can speak to this directly having younger brothers and one that was particularly good at goading me into making mistakes. I'd like to think I'm better than that now. But I mean, you can only take so much before you lash out. Again, part of the struggle. How do I do this? How do I address this? How do I, how do I make sense of this? How do I tell my story? What's going on? The simplest way to put it is without being hyperbolic, without being excessively dramatic, there is a certain faction, in my opinion, that believes the party should be used for the benefit of one individual to make them successful or potentially help them be successful in a specific race. That is not what the party exists for. I have said multiple times, both, well, I I should say during my time on the committee leading it and after that as a candidate, it's your responsibility that people know that you're running. It's your responsibility to get people excited to support you and come out and vote for you. As the party, it's the party's responsibility that the people know that you're one of us, that the party tells people that they're a Republican, they're their conservative, they're their preferred candidate. But if they don't even know you're a candidate, that's not the Republican party's fault. It's as simple as that. Can they, can the two be sympath or symbiotic? Yes, absolutely. Can the two and should the two work together? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, the party doesn't exist on the basis of any one candidate. The party doesn't exist to do one specific thing. Unless, of course, you count winning races, electing Republicans, one specific thing. There's so much going on here. <laughs> I, I did my best to cover where I came from, how I got here, what my involvement is, and where we're at right now. And I'm going to tell you, the party's fractured. It doesn't need to be fractured. We can work together on so many things. People have to check their preferences at the door. People have to be willing to put their hand out and work together. And I know in my life personally, it's kind of a humorous thing because I've always been the radical. I've always been the one pushing the Overton window. I've always been the advocate for more liberty, for more, quite frankly, aggressive ways of getting there. And now that I've had the time and I've done the work and I've been involved, I picked up the wisdom to understand that 
yeah, I can't always have what I want. My personal preferences don't always line up with the majority of the people, but I got to keep pushing to get us where we're there. And you get a lot further with honey than vinegar. Diplomacy matters. Diplomacy is how things get done all the time. And I've done my level best to become a better diplomat, to reach across to the people that are on my team. I don't see it being reciprocated. I don't see people taking it seriously. The whole purpose of the party is to get our team across the finish line. And if we're going to spend all of our time attacking other people on our own team, we're certainly not going to be effective. So ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I thank you. I know you're in about an hour's worth of time. If you've listened on, you know, 1.5 or double speed, you know, 30 or 45 minutes, I, I want to get you a better understanding of where am I coming from? What's, you know, because everything is about what I think and what I, where I'm coming from. So that's why I gave you the first one, part one, right? So spell out where my eyes looking at this, see it. And the second part is just giving you a idea of how, how and what's going on. I've done my best to avoid blaming anybody specifically. I've done my best to acknowledge that neither side is perfectly pure. <laughs> Although one side is doing their level best to purify the party, uh, but not in a positive way, but that's okay. If you are working towards a decent positive end. Okay. I'll push back against you when it's necessary, but I'll work with you on everything else. I think I'm going to do a separate specific episode on Monday, basically outlining the poisonous, terrible, terrible idea that I've been talking about this whole time. I'm sure I've referenced it before, but I'm going to put a little flesh on it. I'm going to detail it out a little bit. I was specifically not detailed in the recommendation. Why? Because none of it's up to me. Absolutely none of it is determined by me, nor should it be. But it was pointed out to me by a wise gentleman that I know who took the time out of his busy day to talk with me on Friday and say, hey, look, Stephen, I get it. But if you're not going to explain what it is or what it might look like, that makes a lot of people nervous. And I said, well, but it's not up to me. Yeah, but you need to give them a vision, an idea. That's your responsibility. Fair enough. So that's what we're going to do. Monday's episode is going to be all about how this might work, what I envision it looking like. Now you can adopt my vision, you can modify my vision, or you can reject it wholesale. That's okay, but that's part of the process. You have to at least hear what it is before you make a decision. So unlike our executive committee meeting where you're not even allowed to hear it, I'm going to work around that and bring it to you directly. All right. With that, I've now gone a few minutes long. I thank you for your time. Happy Sunday. And I will see you on the other side.